my name is Morgan and I live in Central Texas Zone 8B and today I'm going to be showing you around my garden. So it has been extremely hot here. I, I always like to mention the climate that I'm in and the conditions because I think that's important when you are watching a garden tour and looking for inspiration for your own garden. It's always good to know what the climate's like and what's been going on. So we've been in the hundreds, uh, which is 39, um, 40, 39, 40 Celsius, 100 Fahrenheit, 101. We had a 110 degree day. So it's been very hot for the past two and a half months. And we've had very little rain, about about less than an inch. I would, I think it's more like half an inch of rain in that time. We did have a decent rain here where I am in Austin. I know not everyone in Austin got rain, but we got a little bit of rain a week ago and I filled my small rain barrel up and that water's gone so um, it's been hot and it's been dry so I'm gonna make a whole video about keeping the garden alive during a drought because we are technically in a drought so uh, stay tuned for that that will come later this week but I just want to show you around the garden today and it's kind of a mess because I haven't been out here much besides watering because it's hot and I don't want to be in the garden I it's just miserable out. You're like, why are you wearing long sleeves? It's because I've been inside all day and I don't want to come outside after 8 a.m. because it's hot. So I'm just gonna, this is real raw garden tour. It's a mess. We've had some fails, but we also have some exciting things. So before I just keep jabbing, let's get into it and I will show you around the garden. All right, and then this is a new addition to the garden. I don't know if I showed this in my last video, but I got this. Um, Chicago hardy fig plant and it looks like it has some kind of webbing I'm just noticing so that's not good um, but it does have a lot of figs on it and this will be my second fig tree it has dropped a lot of leaves and my other fig tree in the front has also dropped leaves and I think it's just because it's really really hot but hopefully it will stay alive so that's that and then moving on to some pots sorry it's messy I told you guys I didn't have it cleaned up out here um, my stevia is still doing really well uh, I've been putting this in like just infused water I'll just take a couple leaves of this a couple leaves of mint and um, like a lemon slice or something and infuse it in water for a couple days and it's really good and then this is a rock rose and it's a native plant it had opened it was bloomed but now a lot of them have uh, gone to like seed so I should probably deadhead this, but they already had gone to seed. So I was like, oh, well, that's fine. And then another new addition is this lantana. I have another lantana that hasn't flowered yet, but I saw this one and it was super tiny and I love the pink flowers. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm keeping most of my like perennials in pots right now because I'm we rent this house and I want these plants to come with us when we move. So. If you're wondering why I have certain things in pots, that's why. Uh, quick update, the moringa tree is still doing great. Still putting on a ton of new growth. It seems to love this heat. It's also in partial shade. So it's almost, uh, it's not quite as tall as me. I would say it's up to my nose right now. So it's getting really tall and the leaves are just so cute. So. I haven't harvested anything on off of this because I'm just letting it kind of grow and do its thing but I really like it I think it's very cute and then this is not plant related but I had gotten this table and the bench for free and then we found this in the Ikea like um, they have like a restore like where they buy back stuff and it was like all the kind of stain was like all messed up and the table was also all messed up so I got some spray paint and I painted it and I think it looks really good I think it really brightens up the patio a little bit and yeah I love to like re refurbish things so there's with the little plants so um but yeah I love to like refurbish things that you know are gonna go to the landfill and get as much use out of it as possible so I'm pretty happy about that I think it turned out really cute okay back to plants here is my mint still doing pretty good uh, ginger is still doing good this is a native uh, salvia plant I just deadheaded it this morning um, and I also deadheaded all the flowers on this one besides that little guy and that's 
no wait that's a salvia this is not a salvia I forgot the name of it. it has little purple flowers on it so if you know let me know it's a native um, to central Texas so and they both seem to like the heat as well and the green stock is also looking pretty good I had I transplanted all these strawberries in a little garden vlog into here and they all took except one and then I just replaced it with this sage that I grew from seed which I'm really proud of my dog is barking so I'm really happy that I grew this from seed I didn't think I would be able to do it that guy might not make it but most of the strawberries have made it um, and the basil is finally doing something this is in like a really shady spot it pretty much only gets sun right now in the evening um, just because I don't want the strawberries to get fried by this crazy sun um, but once it starts to cool off I'll move it to a sunnier spot Minnie come here Minnie come here And then this is my loquat tree. It's doing all right, I think. Um, some of the leaves got sunburnt, so I moved it under the patio. So it only gets this, like the same as the planter, it only gets this evening sunlight. Um, and it seems to like that a lot more. But it's kind of like got this weird coating on it. And I don't know if that's like an issue or not. I don't know if that's like a pest thing or that's just how the leaves are. The smaller leaves because the bigger leaves they don't seem to have it they have like kind of like dust on them and this patio gets really messy so i leaf blow it like pretty regularly or sweep it or whatever so i don't know if it's just getting dusty from that or what but and then my grandma gifted me this plant um which i did id it so i will put the name up and she propagated this from her plant and she said it's like the easiest plant to take care of so yeah i think it's cute <laughs> it's not it's not edible but i think it's cute all right so here's the main garden area and as you can see i've put up a sunshade and that has helped significantly so it's a it looks a lot different than the last tour because i over there i had my planter box and now i've moved it over here I kind of like pushed everything as everything I could fit under that sunshade. I put it under there because I want as much stuff to get shade during the hottest parts of the day as possible. And it's really, really helped. I think that's the best thing I've done, even though it's not the most attractive thing in the world. I'm super happy I put it up. So that's what the garden looks like. And then I have my other raised bed here, which I've been covering like pretty much every other day with this cover I like just hook it onto the fence just to give those plants a little relief and like I said messy please excuse the mess so we'll start in this first raised bed here and right outside we have a grow bag with okra which I showed in my grow bag video it's doing really well still haven't gotten any okra but I hope soon I will I'm wondering if I overcrowded this grow bag a little bit because there's four plants in it but I thought since they kind of grow tall maybe I can cram them in there I don't know but it's very healthy and it grows every day I feel like there's a new leaf so I'm hoping I'll get okra soon I have a lot of okra planted so hopefully we'll get some this is all okra as well and um, this is grown a little slower but it's it's kind of finally getting established I think after putting the sunshade in it's been a huge it's made a huge difference um so yeah that's made a huge difference for like all the plants actually <laughs> they were all really stressed and i noticed when i came out in the middle of the day like you see how this pepper plant is a little droopy it would be 10 times worse than that extremely droopy and um it wouldn't perk back up until the morning whereas now it seems like things are getting slightly droopy but nowhere close and that means the plants are less stressed which means they'll grow faster and actually maybe produce something. So, um, sunshade, 10 out of 10. Then we have some beautiful zinnias. These are sprinkled throughout the garden. These are the pink ones I have. Um, these are just like a random variety seed pack. And I think these ones also 
came with that same seed pack. They're a little bit bigger. The variety of zinnias. And then um, this one, I believe, is the... No, no, no. This is also the variety. I'll show you the other ones that I actually know the names of in a minute. But they're like all about to bloom as well. It's been really amazing to have flowers in the garden. I wish I planted more, but... The sweet potatoes are also doing well. Um, I have these all throughout the garden and they seem to be taking really well to the heat and not struggling too much. Um, my lemon bomb, not doing great. So I think it's just too hot, honestly. I should have left this in a pot. I think that's probably, probably one of my biggest regrets of this garden season is I had this in a pot last year, it was great. And I put it in the ground because I thought, oh, I love lemon balm. I'll let it take over, take over half this bed. That's fine. But um, it just, I think, got too hot and just keeps flowering. And no matter how much I pick the flowers off, it just keeps flowering again. So maybe it will, hopefully it will reseed itself. Um, and then I'll take some, maybe take some cuttings or something if possible to keep this and put it in a pot. And then my little sad bell pepper that has made two bell peppers. It's all right. Maybe it'll make more it's flowering again. Um, it's just really hot for sweet peppers. Um, hotter peppers can do a little bit better in the heat, but it's just, it's just hot. <laughs> and then um, I put in a couple, whoops, a couple of purple cow beans, and that's what these ones are. And as you can see, I just like compost in place. So if you're like, what is that? It's just like a little, tomato I threw down there that wasn't any good um and I just let it compost there so uh these are purple cow purple, purple whole cow beans so hopefully those will trellis up and then we also have one loofah here and it's really hard so it was really soft for a while and now it's very firm and I'm gonna wait for it to like pretty much completely dry off before I pick it so that I can peel it easily and the sponge is like totally ready to go and I'm excited because I didn't think we were going to get any more loofahs but we did get one another one to pollinate here I can tell because it's it's grown uh, if it wouldn't pollinate it would just like shrivel up and fall off um, so I'm excited that we have another one pollinating and then I have one more so that's very exciting because I thought oh no even like the loofahs are even done in this heat but I think the sunshade really has helped my lemon tree, my Meyer lemon, is also putting on a lot of new growth. And there's still a lemon here. Oh yeah. There's my little lemon. It's still very green, so not ready yet, but it is doing good. Um, I need to repot it into a bigger pot, but I'm just kind of waiting until the lemon ripens. I don't know. I, I wonder if it's okay to repot things when they're fruiting, but I think it's it's all right for now um, since it is putting on all this new growth and doesn't seem to have any issues, so. It's a hummingbird, look, oh my God. It just flew right by me and scared me, oh my gosh. <gasps> that was so amazing. We've I've seen several hummingbirds like this week, but it flew right by my head and kind of scared me. <laughs> okay, so this is my blueberry plant, my two, my three blueberry plants really took a hit from that sun. A lot of the leaves got crispy, so I put them under the sunshade and I hope that they will um, make it through the summer. They obviously won't fruit anymore this year, but I just want to keep them alive. And then coming into this bed on legs, um, I have some more okra as well, which is doing okay, but I think it might have aphids on it. Ugh, there's like ants all over it and I treated it for, um, mealybugs because I thought that it was I think that it had mealybugs but now I think it has something else because it I don't even want to touch the leaves because <laughs> the ants will crawl on me and bite me but um it has some kind of eggs so if you guys can ID that let me know I'll probably just um do a little oops focus sorry I'll probably just do a little um soapy water spray I did a little rubbing alcohol in water because that's what it said to do for the mealybugs and that actually did help so maybe I'll do that again um, but this doesn't look like mealybugs and then my sweet potatoes are going crazy in this bed they're like kind of vining up 
and so that's exciting. I just think sweet potato vines, it, I just think it's really made the garden look a lot greener and a lot lusher, um, a lot more lush, I guess I should say. It's, it's just really helped fill in those like kind of bare gaps. So I really like that. And then we have some peppers in grow bags, which I showed you guys I moved out of my other raised bed on legs so I could amend that soil. And I moved the peppers into these grow bags and they seem to be doing okay. They are starting to put on tiny bits of new growth, some of them, um, so that's good. These were just really struggling. And so I think one, the shade has helped and two, that soil needed to be amended. So we'll see. I figured I would just try to keep these alive. I don't know if they'll make fruit, but this one got eaten up by a, a caterpillar, <laughs> like no hornworm. Oh my gosh. It was crazy huge. It was this big not even kidding this plant was like three feet tall and i came out the next day and i was like what happened <laughs> where did my plant go and there was this huge hornworm on it like huge so i just broke off the branch it was on and like threw it because i was scared and then i've got my little shishito peppers that one needs to come off obviously i'm on top of that um doing good i have i picked some i need to cook them up some of them turn bread, so I'm thinking they might be spicy, but um, I really like shishito peppers. Just like sauteed with a little oil and dipped in like vegan ranch, mm, it's really good. So this plant is, ooh, there's a big one. They've all been really small, but still, still good. Still, still trucking along. And here is the second garden bed. This is my wild tomato bed. Um, my tomatoes are still producing, so the, the ones that are actually still producing are these cherry, no, yeah, cherry, pear, yellow, yellow, pear, cherry tomatoes. They are, like, producing, like, pretty heavily still. Um, here, it's, like, all over, and they still are producing flowers. So, I know a lot of people give up on tomatoes midsummer, but, y'all, it's still, it's still happening. The cherries, they just pull through. So, I did remove all my tomatoes that were in grow bags. They were just struggling. Uh, grow bags don't retain moisture as well. So, you know, this is the black creme. I really liked these. Um, the first round we got, we got maybe 10 black creme tomatoes off this one plant and they were all really good. So I'm not sure if these, whoop, oh no, did I break it off? Oh no, it's okay. Um, I'm not sure if these will be as good just because it's been so hot, but like that one I think is, probably bad um but i might end up just chopping these plants down and replanting different tomatoes but i figured you know especially the the plum the pear ones why can i not remember that it's a pear tomato pear it literally looks like a pear um sorry i like can't speak today i've been talking to a toddler all day and <laughs> sometimes when i don't talk to an adult all day and then i try speaking i'm like I don't make any sense so sorry about that but um my watermelon on this trellis we have this is that like a dead fly or just like ew ew gross i think that was like a dead fly on there um or maybe it was sleeping gross anyways my watermelon is finally taking off i kind of forgot that i planted a watermelon here but it's finally taking off and it actually flowered so maybe that i don't think it got pollinated though I don't know, but I was kind of surprised that I had a watermelon here. And then this is the Malabar spinach, and it's also doing pretty well. The leaves are just really tiny, so I'm wondering if they just take a while to get bigger um, or if it's just a little hot for them. I also put in, sorry, not the best view, but I put in another green bean, uh, not green bean, purple cow pea, same as the other ones. And then over here I have more as well of those purple cow peas. I also planted in a few winter squash here, so if I do take out the tomatoes, the winter squash will have plenty of room to spread out, take over this bed, um, but we'll see if they can make it. My cucumber is finally taking off, which is hilarious because every other Texas gardener I know or have seen post, they their cucumbers have died, and I'm like, hmm, mine is actually finally looking good after looking like horrible for the past three months. So kind of hilarious. We have picked a couple cucumbers and they have not been bitter at all. They've been really good. 
Um, they're small cucumbers, but we've just been eating them because we haven't had enough for pickles or anything. But the plant is looking really good. And I think that if I can keep it alive through these 100 degree days into late August, hopefully it will cool down a little bit. Hopefully I'll get a lot of cucumbers, but we'll see. It also just really looks pretty and it just brings me joy. This is another loofah plant actually. Um, haven't gotten any loofahs off of it, but do have some tiny babies. So maybe, maybe we will. Um, and then over here I have uh, some kind of winter squash. I think it's a red curry squash. Um, never grown it before, but I'm hoping that we'll trellis up this wire cage. And then this is the last bed. Sorry, I didn't announce that we were on the last bed. This is the cucumbers, or the last in-ground bed. Uh, cucumbers and loofah are here. We have some very sad looking borage. It's like it keeps flowering, but the middle part, it looks horrible. So, um, I don't know, the, the pollinators like it, so I'm leaving it in. Um, and it's actually kind of spiky though. So I was kind of surprised about that, it's <laughs> fuzzy. But um, I need to probably deadhead it and that helps when I deadhead it, it'll help make it more flowers. And then all throughout this bed, I have sweet potatoes. I have some sweet potatoes over there, sweet potatoes over here. And then I've planted a couple more of those winter squash in here. Hopefully those will take off and more okra as well. And then this is, these are the uh, zinnias from Baker Creek. And I finally, finally have my little polar bear zinnia. It's so adorable. I'm just like obsessed with it. I love like, for some reason I really like white flowers white and yellow and I just think it's so cute so hopefully we'll get more of those but the purple ones are also very pretty that one's about to do something I like the zinnias because they kind of start really small and then every day they just get bigger and bigger and it's it's like you never know what you're gonna expect when you come out here and there's like a new one and then we have tiny teeny tiny eggplant here and then another one also teeny tiny but a little bigger eggplant that is finally doing something but it is actually finally like kind of taken off so maybe we'll get eggplant this year i don't know never grown eggplant from seed before so i'm excited and then this bed i topped up with compost soil a lot of compost and mulch new fresh mulch and I replanted it. I left in the sweet potatoes. They are doing fine. Sweet potatoes here and there. And what I planted was sunflowers. So I started these from seed in the seed pods. And these are the sunflowers that are supposed to produce a lot of edible seeds. So I'm hoping we get some of those. They're looking pretty good. And then I also put a few squashes in here, which as you can see, they're kind of getting yellow and it's just the sun is just blasting on them. So I'm not sure if they'll make it. And then my basil plant that I thought was dead, finally taking off. Very exciting. I love basil, so I'm happy about that. And then the last thing I actually just did was I planted some Cosmo seeds all throughout this bed and throughout a couple other beds. And they've already like popped up a lot. Like there's some more. I planted a few different varieties of Cosmos. And so I'm hoping we'll get some more flowers in the garden and have some more color. Um, I'm not even going to show you my back bed because it's a struggle back there, my back bed. I'm planning on just having that be my fall bed because I, I don't have a sunshade out there and I think it's just way too hot. So, um, yeah. And then here's our kind of second patio area, which I'll just quickly show you. My rosemary is still doing pretty good. This planter has turned into like a mush of randomness and I kind of am loving it. It's got lemon basil in it, which I really like to make pesto with. It is flowering, so I just come out and I pull off the flowers. But I stuck in some like purple heart in here. And then it also has like a little random succulent that was from a free cutting. And then I have another like random succulent as well in here. And so I kind of just love the like randomness of it, but it also somehow looks cute. So I am digging it. And this is one basil plant and it's literally a bush so it's pretty impressive and then my other little sad herb corner um my thyme is doing fine actually this is thyme my my oregano is not it's 
just been fried so might have to start over on the oregano and then my other time is also doing pretty good but my um yeah this is what a lot of my plants have looked like <laughs> that have been pulled out i didn't show you much but just to get a representation of like what 80 percent of my plants have done in the past two months yeah just kind of like fried in the sun and this is in a shady spot so like it gets shade like except for like three hours a day so if that tells you anything but yeah i'm not getting as much produce out of the garden as i wanted and you know some people might see that as a failure i've seen a lot of people you know i'm in some groups like on facebook and stuff that people are gardeners in this area and people are really discouraged and i understand it's it's really discouraging when you kind of have this plan and it doesn't go as planned and you have to rip things out that you really didn't want to rip out and you're not getting produce off of them and it is a bummer it's a huge bummer um but good thing is the climate here we have a really really long growing season and so we can do more in the fall um so i'm trying not to get too hung up i'm getting excited about fall tomatoes and fall peppers and sunflowers so while my garden might not be extremely productive and i'm picking like you know cherry tomato here pepper there it's like not how i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be like baskets full of produce and it's just not like that um and then you see people gardening like oh i got picked my lettuce today and i picked my kale and i'm like oh, <laughs> oh. yeah no that's all dead that's been dead so i think it can be discouraging but i you also have to understand that people live in different climates than you people have different access to materials um but it's been a hot summer it's been the hottest summer since i've lived in austin for five years and um yeah, so I think the garden's doing okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm like amazed by it. Uh, it's not really what I was hoping for. I was hoping to get a lot more produce out of it this year, especially with all the work I put in, but you know, it's fine. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot of lessons. I've learned what I do like and what I don't like. So um, if you're struggling this garden season, know that you're not alone and it's gonna get better <laughs> and just keep trying. And you know, every, failure is a learning experience so those are my words of gardening wisdom that's all i have to say i'm very exhausted um the heat really drains me and it's just been super hot and um i've been kind of stuck inside with i already said i was stuck inside with a toddler and um because it's hard to he doesn't want to be outside when it's hot and we come out in the morning you know but by nine o'clock it's 80 it's 95, 97 degrees. So he's like, uh, I don't wanna play out here, which understandable. So um, it's kind of like opposite winter here. Like in the winter you can't go outside, but then in the summer here you can't go outside. So I don't know what's worse, but anyways, I'm rambling. I hope you all have a good day and hope you enjoyed this garden too. I would love to know what you're growing in your garden and I hope you enjoyed and leave me a comment. I love reading your comments. Uh, they've all been super nice and helpful and also subscribe because that's helpful I think or something like that I'm not really sure how YouTube works but yeah just like the video subscribe that's what everyone says so I'm gonna say it too okay have a good rest of your day and thanks for watching I forgot to show you guys I started some seeds so I will show you really quick before I go my cat is meowing at me but I will show you my indoor seeds that I started because everyone loves starting seeds. All right, so here's my seed setup. I started red cabbage, uh, Brunswick cabbage, which is a green cabbage. I started onions, which I might not be able to harvest as onions, but I should be able to get green onions out of them before it freezes. Swiss chard, purple of Sicily, which is a cauliflower, Brad's atomic grape, another type of tomato that I'm not gonna try to pronounce right now. Um, but it's like a large cherry tomato. And then I also started, I ran out of tags, obviously. <laughs> I started um, Tiny Tom tomatoes, which are like the six inch tomatoes. And I thought that I could keep those inside um, if it gets too cold, but they're supposed to be able to stay in six inch pots. And then, I don't remember. Oh, I started some peppers, some, um, some kind of spicy pepper I got for free from my seed order and I don't remember, it's gonna be a surprise, but I labeled most of them. So you all can be really proud of me because I never label anything 
and even though I ran out of labels, I still feel like, you know, I did, I did try. So yeah, there's my, there's my seeds. And look how cute they are. So cute.